last year was 40,000, now you're talking 50,000, and it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's really good that our supporters have jumped on board and we've now you know, given them something to come to the football and be proud of and uh, hopefully we can push it even higher and you know, 50 plus is what we're aiming for and that's why we're here today to see if we can promote that a little bit more. It's a nice thing to see this going through the city or will be a nice thing? Yeah, it is. It just goes to show how much we're, I suppose, as a football club, we're growing. We're, you know, we're a big part of Adelaide City itself, and uh, you know, we're going to go right through the whole of Adelaide now, and uh, hopefully, we'll grab a few more supporters along the way. And the, any more about the <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, The game itself. What do you want out of tomorrow night uh, against Essendon? Oh, look, there's no secret we've put in our, our our stronger side this week and we want to make sure that we you know, see some things that we've worked on really hard over the summer and just see an effort from the boys that we uh, get used to seeing and uh, you know, a pretty consistent performance from for the whole of the four quarters. Are you keen to win at least one game uh, before the season proper starts to go into the year? I'm keen to win every game we're involved with, there's no doubt about that and I want to win every game we possibly can but you know, it, it's not at the expense of getting ready, I said even last week, it's not at the expense of getting ready for round one so you know, the wins at this time of the year I suppose are a little bonus for us but it's just more about the structure and the way the boys play that we want to see first. Is it How enough? close to a, a round one kind of approach do you take into this game? Oh, well, again, I've been on record saying that our, our last two games are the two games that we uh, certainly want to be at our strongest and, and given a good account of ourselves. And you know, this is this is the first of those two games. So, hopefully, we're not far away from our round one side now. You know, and obviously, room for players to still push themselves up because we do go to this game with you know an extended squad. So we've got 26 players that we've got, plus we've got a couple other boys that are, that are still waiting to get back into the side. So we're not far away though. Is Just on that, how concerned with the Knights around one are you about your, your defence, your keys? defenders particularly not being out there? Oh, I'd, I'd certainly like them to be out there now but look we're really confident they'll be okay I've, look, I've watched Jacko and Bobby both uh, run and train this morning and you know they're moving really well so look they still need an ounce of luck to make sure everything goes right but we're pretty confident they'll be there for round one and you know whether they're a chance to play for St Kilda next week or not we still want to wait and see with that one. There's a story about Bryce Gibbs today you, you right in the market there? Nah look the interesting ones media want to speculate on who they are and who they're not but we, we've got to do our, our work on the whole competition and see what players are available to us you know and and see whether they're players that fit our needs now whatever those players are we'll go through them all very closely and see if there's a player that suits Port Adelaide and, and they're happy to be a part of that or we'll go to the draft and pick kids as we would normally do. He's a midfielder obviously I, would, I wouldn't have thought first that's an area of need is it you've got bigger areas of need than that perhaps? Oh look you're always in the market for great midfielders yeah. isn't it? I've got two standing beside me that are pretty important midfielders for us but I'm sure they'd like to have another one around to help them but you know look as you're right you've got to look at your list you've got to look at your priorities and see what they are and we won't make those decisions until way into the year this year. Um, just also on David, David Kosh has been pretty outspoken about a couple of things do you feel the need to have a chat behind closed doors? Are you, are you comfortable with him being so uh, public about s making some statements you know, about the coaching originally with Richo and then the stuff with uh, King last week? Oh, no, look, David's, you know, he's, he's a paid media performer, so he's, he's out there all the time and he's, his opinion's sought by everyone and, you know, he's, he's there every morning for everyone to ask those questions off. We'd, we'd certainly like Port Adelaide stuff to say Port Adelaide and that's all we want to worry about. It's what we do as a football club, you know, and that's the number one thing that we're going to control, what Port Adelaide does, nothing else, and we don't want to buy into too many other things other than what Port Adelaide do. So do you need to talk to him about that at all or are you just happy him saying what he wants? Oh no, we uh, you know, we have discussions all the time, and whether we, we talk about that or other issues, we will certainly talk about all those things that come up. And you know, I'm sure they'll be just pretty general discussions, though, about how we like to be seen and how we want to behave in, in, in public and what we want our football club to look like. And one of the things we do want our football club to look like is is that we want to make sure we're doing the absolute best we can to have Port Adelaide the strongest we can be. So he hasn't put more pressure on the leadership group at all in his comments last week. No, I don't, look, I don't think so. Our leadership group are really strong. They're, they're a young group. They, they know what we stand for as a football club. They know that the things that they deal with are things that involve Port Adelaide, nothing else. And, that, and what gets said outside the football club doesn't probably matter too much to the group. They, they control what's inside the football club. And these two boys next year, obviously, um, Trav had an All-Australian year last year and Hamish had probably his best year as well. What are your expectations on these two guys this year? Uh, they'll do. They'll they'll uh, look to improve their own game. They'll look to improve our football club, and that uh, you know they'll they'll perform it when it counts most for us, and that's on game day. And you know hopefully that starts for us tomorrow night for both the lads. Just with the game against the Crows last week, apart from the, the scoreboard, was there any um, any of the youngsters that you were really happy with? Anyone that stood out in your eyes? 
Oh, look, there's, there's always a lot with that. It's hard when you look at the scoreboard. If you just purely look at the numbers, you think, well, it's, it was a disappointing result uh, to lose like we did. But when you go through the side, you, you look at Pollack, you look at White, you look at Empey, you look at uh, Cleary, you look at Homs down back, even as a young defender. We've got so many positives that we get out of those games. And I said before the game, the important part is if we don't play those younger lads in those, those first couple of games, you don't get a chance to see them. And it's really important for us to get an idea of where they're at compared to AFL competition. And we got lots of information out of that game. Have you got the stage where you've sort of cut down to 28 players for your best 22, or is it still open slather at this stage? Oh, no, she's still open at the moment. I mean, you, you just never know where the surprises can come from, and you know, and hopefully we might find another one or two of them tomorrow night, and uh, you know, and, and that, that'll be really good for us. But we also know there's still some talent not in the squad that we can still call on. Yeah. How, how many players would be in that mix? Though, do you think you're, you're really confident you've got? 30 guys who are certainly capable of playing in round one if needed. Yeah, I think we've got 30 plus to be honest. You know, we've got we've got a good bit of depth at, at our football club now, and that that comes about with you know the way we play week in week out, and that'll be that'll be a reflection if we have got good depth. We're not probably going to know that exactly until we test it out a little bit more, and you know, uh, hopefully we don't need to test our depth out too much, and we stay really healthy and fit, and you know, we get to run with a pretty consistent group of players. As you said, you would have been pretty pleased with some of those kids in that uh, first game. You know, Polik and, and Impy showed he had a fair bit of talent. As well. Yeah, as I said, there's no doubt that you get lots of things out of a game like that. Even though the scoreboard goes against, you actually get to see, you know, younger players and, and some experienced players behave in a different way than the, against the quality of the opposition that we played against.